Good afternoon, everybody. It is Jeannie Fisher, a certified financial planner and senior 401k advisor with Argy, and we are continuing our discussion around your 401k plan fees. So far, we've identified who your service providers are, and we've done the math on how you calculate their compensation if they're paid directly. And today, we're going to start tiptoeing into revenue sharing or indirect compensation. Now, it's exactly like what it sounds. It's where one service provider collects revenue and then turns around and remits some of it to another service provider to actually pay for some of their fees. Now, the thing about direct compensation inside a 401k is that it's disclosed more clearly, even down to the participant statement where they see a dollar figure for the fees that they are paying. The most common type of revenue sharing inside a 401k comes from the investment funds. So you can have an investment fund and you have an expense ratio. And that expense ratio, of course, includes the cost that it takes to manage the fund, but it can also include other fees. And there's two main types that I would address today. There's the 12B1 fee, which covers commissions and marketing expenses of the fund. 12B1 fees are often remitted back to an advisor or a broker. You can also have sub-TA fees, which help cover some of the administrative expenses of the fund, and those can be remitted back to a record keeper or a platform. So, you can have um, all of these different fees built into the expense ratio, and when that happens, it's not as transparent to the fiduciary or the plan participant because the fees come from the fund's assets, which means they're deducted from return. They're not exactly listed anywhere. So, different mutual funds accommodate these different levels of fees by having different share classes. And that's really, really important, and I want people to understand what a share class is because you can have the exact same mutual fund, the exact same strategy, the exact same investment manager, but depending upon the share class, you could be paying a different rate. I like to compare it to two people getting on an airplane. Uh, if I get on an airplane with my coworker in Nashville, uh, I fly first class, she flies coach, we are going to leave Nashville at the exact same time. We're going to arrive at our destination at the exact same time. We'll have the same turbulence, the same up and downs. If we crash, we crash together, right? But I paid a different rate to be on that airplane. And that's really how you can look at a share class inside of a mutual fund. Certain share classes are going to be paying more than others to be on the exact same strategy. So. I'm not saying revenue sharing is terrible or bad or always awful. I can tell you that us here at Argy will definitely um, appreciate a more transparent fee structure because we have found that fiduciaries and retirement plan committees uh, who have plans with revenue sharing struggle to understand exactly what the service providers are being paid. And if one of your stated fiduciary duties is to make sure that all fees are reasonable, then it's a whole lot easier to do that if fees are just clearly stated. Um, and then you can judge the reasonableness of who is receiving what. So for us, we like to build plans with zero revenue sharing lineups, very transparent fees. We just think it's a whole lot easier for us and our plan fiduciaries to analyze them. There's more to revenue sharing. There's other ways that revenue is shared behind the scenes. We're going to go into that next week, but I think we've covered enough for today. I hope that you all have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll talk to you soon.